Now to the PARP inhibitors, which is where we've had the most um, kind of new data occur over the last year um, to two years, I mean, especially over these last few months. So, you know, just as a quick review of the mechanism of action, you know, the PARP inhibition is involved in single-stranded break repair. And or sort of PARP itself is involved in single-stranded break repair. And so in a normal cell, when you inhibit PARP, it doesn't necessarily affect the machinery of the cell or affect the way the cell repairs its um, DNA breaks. However, if you have single-stranded breaks that are not able to be um, repaired, you get accumulation of double-stranded breaks. Now, those double-stranded breaks are going to be repaired by homologous recombination. Um, and so that gets into when we have a cell that it cannot utilize homologous recombination. There's a homologous recombination deficiency. Then PARP inhibition seems to work the best. Now, what causes that homologous recombination deficiency? There's a couple of different mechanisms, but generally it involves um, pathway members that are in that DNA damage rep uh, repair pathway, such as BRCA, which is our most common. But also we can see other pathway members like ATR, ATM, RAD51D, RAD51C, all of those are involved in homologous recombination repair. And if they're aberrant, if they're non-functioning, that cell can be damaged by a PARP. So you hit the cell with PARP. It has its single-stranded breaks accumulate. It develops new double-stranded breaks, but then it cannot repair. And that leads to cellular catastrophe, um, genomic instability, and cell death. So because of that, initially studies were really focused on BRCA mutant tumors, but as we've learned, more and more tumors may potentially be sensitive to, um, to PARP inhibition. And so there's a number of frontline trials that have now been reported. Now, I'm not going to get into too much detail. There's tons of detail on this slide, and it's more meant to just give an overview of the four major trials that looked at PARP inhibition in the upfront setting. We're going to go through each one in a little bit of detail. But just some of the highlights, the PRIMA and SOLO1 trials were single agent, true maintenance studies that were started after the patients had a response to therapy. SOLO1 was only in BRCA mutant, while PRIMA was in all comers. Paula required the patients to have received chemo with bevacizumab, then have a response, and then Olaparib could potentially be added in a randomized fashion. And then finally, Velia was the only study to combine a PARP inhibitor, Viliparib, with chemo in the upfront setting, followed by potentially Viliparib maintenance. And so that's really the difference between all those. And you can see the hazard ratios. Bottom line is they all work. The question is, where do they work the best? And what it comes down to, and what I'm really going to be excited to hear from our panelists today, is how do you make those decisions? How do you decide whether or not you're going to give um, chemotherapy with PARP? Or how do you decide when you're just going to stick to a PARP maintenance? So I'm, I'm hoping they're getting ready to tell me all these answers. <laughs> 